Hello and welcome to another awesome episode of the Show Me Mo School Facilities Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peach, and we've got a, a good one here today with, a, a, I guess, a longtime friend. It, it's a post-COVID friend. I met Charlie Martin uh, in New Mexico in 2021, and uh, somehow we've just crossed paths and continued to have conversations and discussions and Full disclosure, uh, we're going to be talking about cooperative purchasing. Uh, one of the companies that I'm a part of, Operations Hero, is on the TIPS contract. So um, I do have some experience, but I also have a direct tie in there. I don't want anybody to think anything otherwise. But um, Mr. Charlie Martin, how are you first and foremost, my friend? Happy Monday. Hey, good after, Happy Monday, Josh. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, like Josh said, we We've been bumping to each other for, I don't know, several years now. And so, hey, thanks for having me on the podcast. This is my first, by the way. Yeah. Well, we're going to haze the heck out of you now. You have no idea what goes on for first timers. Um, no, I, I appreciate you giving us your time and, and your expertise. You know, one of the interesting things uh, and why I wanted to do this is there's a lot wrapped around cooperative purchasing for public institutions. Um, there's, I mean, I want to unpack this whole thing because you know, I, I think that they're great. I think that there's a great purpose for them. I believe that uh, we'll, we'll talk about leveraging buying power and all that stuff. But I just don't think enough people actually understand what a cooperative purchasing program is and don't get involved in it unless they're really, you know, educated by people like you. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what is a cooperative purchasing program? What's an agreement look like? Do You know, where can they use them or not use them? Right. Um, kind of the bits and the bites, and then we'll peel off from there. All right. Yeah, it's that's a lot to unpack. You know, cooperatives have been around for a long time, right? I mean, it started back in the old days of farmers forming a cooperative just so they could buy seeds at a cheaper price, right? So yep. it's not anything new, but it's just what's happened is in the government world, in the world of government spend, which is public school, higher ed, all those public entities, uh, they're always looking for best value, right? And so here about, I would say, over 20 years ago, um, TIPS, the Interlocal Purchasing System, started up basically as a really small cooperative in Northeast Texas. Uh, our lead agency was Region 8 Education Service Center, still is. We're still housed in that building. Uh, Region 8 oversaw about 40 some odd school districts in Northeast Texas. And they were always looking for a better way to buy janitorial, bus tires, uh, copy paper, anything that schools really kind of needed. Uh, there were absolutes had to buy, right? And so mm -hmm. Region 8 decided, let's put a cooperative together and uh, see if we could get those bought in bulk at a discounted rate. So they did. And it worked. And school districts were saving money. And they liked the convenience of it. Um, you know, every school district has its own local policies, right? But then there's always state policies that they have to abide by. So compliance is always a key. So the contracts have to be compliant. You know, you are following your local policy. Um, but with that given and those in place, what happens is you can go out and instead of, you know, you've got a vendor that you really like, you do business with, uh, they give you good price, they give you good service and you want to continue to use them, then a cooperative is your answer. That's how you go about that. So, um, you know, in today's world, it's uh, it's pretty fast paced. It's pretty hectic. You can spend a lot of time searching for goods and services uh, and maybe not find exactly what you want or do business with who you want to do, do business with. Uh, but cooperatives kind of give you that, that advantage to doing that. Right. And it's be, I used to tell, uh, uh, COOs of school business officials all the time. Hey, if you want to have a chance to go on vacation in the summertime, start using cooperatives, you know, because it'll make your life easier. It'll simplify things and it'll definitely speed things up. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it they fulfill, and I'm, I'm assuming this is, you know, across the board because you guys are in many States now. Yeah, um, we're in all 50. It, oh, you're in all 50 States. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, so this a cooperative also fulfills the requirements. It checks all the boxes in place of having to go to bid or an RFP. Correct. Correct. You know, they're not. I mean, 
Right. And, you know, every state has a little bit of different uh, laws on their public procurement. But for the most part, uh, you can use a cooperative and uh, most states have cooperative language for that mm -hmm. allow public entities like school districts to use a cooperative when making a purchase or or doing some kind of renovation, whether that's roofing or or astroturf for a for a soccer field or whatever lighting, they have um, they have statutes that allow you to do that. You know, so we always tell everybody, look, you know, every state's different. Make sure you check with your legal counsel there at your district to make sure this is the right thing for your district. And if you get the green light, then we're here for you because yeah. uh, we want to facilitate what you do and we want to help you get who you want to use and and work with somebody's going to give you good service um after the sale which that's what you you worry about when you get in the bid world sometimes you don't always get um you know lowest bid's not always the best and it's not always mm -hmm. the cheapest when you go looking down the road you want to make sure there's somebody there's going to back that up right mm -hmm. six months down the road you don't want to be looking for some guy that's out of business so right. that's what we try to do with the cooperative. We want to make sure we vet um, every one of our vendors. If we have a vendor that's that's one of our uh, our people and you're one of our members, we're going to make sure that that vendor takes care of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you when you go on the line and use one of our vendors, you want to know that it's compliant, it's been vetted, uh, they've scored well, they have bonding capacity if it's some kind of public work. Uh, that these people are going to be there, you know, a year, two years, three years down the road, and they're going to give you really good service. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the things when we talk about cooperatives and lists and things, I think that the, that's one of the things that people don't understand. And I've gone through the process with multiple cooperatives over the course of my career, which is you guys do a pretty extensive vetting. I mean, the, the, the RFP process is actually, more uh more strenuous on the vendor side to respond to a co-op than it would be to an individual institution in most cases uh because you have to cover such a wide array of of needs uses and and it's got to be the best you know we got to provide you with the best best possible price we got to provide you with the best possible product best possible service and it's not just for one it's for all and uh because you're doing not just one one it's for all um, there's also that capacity of you could re you could remove or revoke a contract by violating any of that, which would then take you away from all those 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 public entities opportunities. Yeah, you're exactly right. First off, we have probably over a thousand different contracts, right? So if you're in the school world, and I know there's a lot of school people listening to this, man, there is a ton of things it takes to run a school. Schools yep. are not just you know a guy in a broom closet anymore. There's they're, they're, they're big money driven kind of machines where you've got a, bit, a building that costs you a lot of money, taxpayers a lot of money. And it takes a lot to run that building and keep it up. Josh, I've seen schools pass a bond, they build a new school, and because they don't have the right people trained, they don't yeah. have the right people in place, they don't have the right controls in place, you go back to that school in 8, 10 years and it's almost destroyed. Um, right. And I've seen that firsthand. Uh, so you have to have uh, all of those things in place to maintain your building, to keep your building running forward. And like I said, we, we've been in the business for a long time. We know the school world. I'm an ex-school superintendent, uh, ex-coach. Not until I figured out, till I got on the administrative side of things, and I was a maintenance director for a while, that I really didn't have a clue what it took to run a build, run a building or a plant yeah. or a facility and the people that took to do that. Uh, these people are unsung heroes. They work hard every day. Their satisfaction comes from one, keeping the doors open, keeping the bathrooms clean, keeping the floors looking sharp, the building looking sharp so people can go in, do their job. Kids can go to school and learn. And this is, like I said, it's changed so much in the last 25 to 30 years and how business or, or, or buildings are maintained and kept up. And it's just, this is just, like I said, it's not a guy in a mop bucket closet anymore. Uh, yeah. These are things that, that uh, if you're not careful, can cost your district a lot of money if you don't do them right. So we want to make sure that we give good service. Number one, you were talking about that and about possibly losing the contract. 
very one of the things we want to do two things all right we want to give the best service uh, of any cooperative out there. And I think that's one of the things, one of the two things that sets us apart from uh, other cooperatives. Number one is, like I said, we want to give the best service. So if yeah. you got a question, you call us, you send us an email. We've got a whole group of people up and down this hall um, that's willing to take your phone call or answer your email. If an email sits in a box for over four hours, we probably hadn't done our job. So, because we know you need to an answer. And if it's a legal answer or if it's just a question about a vendor or, or whatever, uh, or just about joining up, we want to make sure we give you absolutely the best service, personal service that there is out there of any cooperative. Second thing, if you're one of our vendors and we want to make sure, number one, that you're vetted, that you, that you, out of the process you were talking about a while ago, what it takes to yep. get a contract from us, it's pretty extensive. I mean, there's probably 70, 80 questions that you're going to have to fill out. You're going to have to jump through some hoops. You're going to have to have some work history, some references. Uh, if you're construction side of things, you're going to have to have some bonding capacity. We just don't give, I mean, we're not looking for two guys in a truck that, that claim to be roofers. We're looking for people who are solid business people who bring great service and will do what they say. So uh, if your school, we're going to back the member up. Just be honest with you. We're going to give that member the peace of mind, knowing that one, that contract's been vetted to a good place, that that contract's rock solid. Now, that's a couple of things we're going to do. If you have an issue with a vendor, you can help bring us that. We'll help mediate that. Here's what the vendor knows. If the vendor doesn't follow through, and we've had the, we've had this happen not many times. I can only think of one time this has ever happened. Well, we had a vendor that didn't follow through. Basically, uh, he underbid or what he thought it was going to take to do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, we threatened to pull his contract. And uh, the owner of the company says, I would rather eat a million uh, than lose my tips contract. So they yep. went ahead and, and followed through and did the right thing with the school district. So uh, we always have that power to do that. We don't like to do it, but we can. But we want to stand behind our members and make sure that uh, if they entered into this bargain with one of our vendors, that our vendor follows through. Yeah, no, and that's and that's that's huge, uh, and especially today, um, oh, yeah. is you know because there are so few really good, even good companies. Kind of like the what that owner said, you know, I'd rather eat a million dollars right now. Um, than, than, you know, lose tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars down the road. Understanding that impact, you know, that strength and numbers factor is is huge. And, you know, and I think that there's, you know, for me, <clears throat> and I'll be honest with you, I, and I think you and I had this conversation, I was not a big co-op person for a big part of my career. Um, I just figured I could knock on the door, do my job, do it well, and and people would buy stuff and be happy. And you know, as I navigated and I went down the path, first of all, the average RFP costs a company about $10,000 to respond to. That's to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't have a big win rate, uh, you're not good with RFP responses. Uh, you you can be out of business just by responding to bids and losing because uh, it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it's a lot. Um, you know, then the next piece to that is, you know, what are we uh, what, what are we what are we doing here? What do we want the outcome to be for the client? Um, we want it to be uh, seamless. We want it to be smooth. We want them to feel good about the end of the day, what's going on and how they're doing it. Wow. And we want their peers to be all on board with all of that. And so, you know, for, for you to be able to go and say, hey, look, here's what we have. Here's this ball of awesomeness that we want to give you. Um, guess what? We wrapped it up and we put a little bow on it called, you know, co-op purchasing, whatever that, whatever that is, because that's going to be the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that there are other co-ops out there and right. people have to go with what they're comfortable with, but here it is, Mr. And Mrs. Customer. Uh, it's all right here wrapped in a bow and kind of like what you said, Hey, you want to have summer vacation, and enjoy yourself, make it that easy. And that's, nope. that's really what, what you guys bring to the table, which is a whole bunch of stuff. And then the last piece is, is vendor responsibility. You, you know, you haven't had to do that many times quoting you um, you're, you're vetting those, those vendors ahead of time. So you don't have to like that right. for me, be, outside looking in, 
being the not the optimist side of me um i'm sitting here going man there's so many bad companies i'm gonna be babysitting and i'm gonna be firing people left and right and the reality is you know people don't get into your agreements unless they're unless they're the real deal they know that they're going to come through and that they're willing to they're willing to put a million dollars on the line or whatever that amount is um to make things right so that they can have you know an agreement that lasts and that's yeah. that's pretty strong stuff you know we we ask anytime you respond back to one of our bids, we ask for five references, right? Yep. And people, a lot of vendors get upset with us because we just can't kick them out of contract like that, right? It yep. takes time. I mean, we'll put out a response. We'll run it for six weeks. And then, you know, we'll gather them all up. We'll score them. And then we'll award. And, you know, just can't do that overnight. It takes weeks and weeks to do that because when you ask for five references, it takes a while to get all those references back yeah. for each one of those companies. You know, you may, you, you said something about, uh, which I, it's interesting on the, on the vendor side about uh, chasing bid work and you can work yourself out of, you know, yeah. out, of, out of a job if you don't get any of those, but here's, here's the flip side of that. Here's the school side of that. So if you're a school district and you're trying and you you know, the threshold is over 50,000 or 100,000 or whatever your state says it is. And you're getting, and you're thinking, what do I need? You got three choices. All right. If you're, if you're a public school or a private school or charity, uh, charter school, whatever, you got three choices, mainly. You got first choice is I can buy it off of, if you're a public school state contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing about state contract. Those are great. If you can find what you're looking for, a lot of states have certain state contracts, but for, like I said, we got a thousand and eighty five. There's not a thousand eighty five state contracts. You know, there might be one, two or three in certain areas in most states. Right. And it mm -hmm. can be anything from ambulances, fire trucks, roofing, whatever. OK, so you get you can look on a state contract. That's one. Number two, you can put it out for bids yourself. But the thing is, like everybody in the school world has a job their primary yeah. job and they're doing that primary job every day. So you're going to have to ask a superintendent or a facility maintenance director. You're going to have to ask somebody to stop what they're doing, their regular job. And let's put a bid packet together uh, for this roof or this turf field or whatever. So they got to stop and do that. Okay. Which takes time. Number two, school people, most of them do not have the insight as to what that's going to cost. So they're going to have to call somebody and say, hey, we're thinking about putting a roof on the cafeteria. Right. So what's that going to look like? You know, and so they're not roofers. And so they're going to have to call somebody. So somebody's going to have to show up and give them an idea about what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the bid process. Then you put that together, you put it out, you see who responds. If In a lot of rural schools, nobody responds. And because nobody wants to go down to a rural area and, and do work like that. Mm -hmm. So, or then you wind up having like, three guys. One guy's bid is just out crazy in orbit. Okay. And he's like, well, if I get that, I'm going to make some money. I really don't want to do it, but I'll do it if they pay. Me. Then you got a guy that's probably pretty close to on the money, what you might pay for. But he's only been in business for six months, you know? So do I really want to use that guy a year from now? If I got issues, he's going to be around. Okay. Then you got a guy that's probably a, you know, a whole lot less than the other two because he's missed something. You know, and then he's going to have to come back and he's going to change order you mm -hmm. to death to get it. And then you'll look up and all of a sudden he's going to be more than the middle guy was or the first guy. So that's what you kind of get into in the bid world. And it may, none of those three may be people you want to do business with. So cheapest is not always best. Best is not always cheapest. So just remember that. Yeah. So those are the three things, the three options you have in the school or, or two options you have in the school world. The third is cooperatives. And that's what we do at TIPS. Uh, those contracts have already been put out. I, I give you this kind of, let me tell you what we're not, Josh. We're not a business, okay? We're not a corporation. We're a tax-supported entity just like a school district. A lot of people try to figure out like, well, it, you know, a school district can put out a bid. How are y'all able to put out a bid as well? Well, we're just like a school district. We take taxpayer money from the state of Texas. We put out all these bids. Schools can do the same. County, city government can do the same. But we put them out, and that's what we do. And we have these bids in place ready for school districts to use when they get ready to use them. So it's like that's where the term interlocal comes in, okay? Mm -hmm. So 
we enter into an agreement with the school district and that's an interlocal agreement. So it's one tax supported entity to the other tax supported entity. They're using one of our contracts that we already have in place. So like I said, we're the third option on it. Um, yep. And it's a, it's a really good viable option. If you want to say you have a relationship with a vendor, they are a tips vendor, then, Hey, it's a marriage made in heaven because you don't have to spend two months waiting to get that project off the ground. And, in the school world, uh, your facilities guy, you understand this, you've got a small window that you can get yep. projects done where you're not stepping on top of kids and, or students and teachers are not disrupting the learning environment, right? So if you're doing an HVAC change out or you're doing flooring or whatever, you got to have people out of the building a lot of times to get what you need done. And so if you're going to do a bid process, you're going to have to back up several months to get that done and then allow that person to stage. And then when school's out or the situation's right, move in to do that. So we're going to take at least two months out of that, that equation for you by just using the cooperative. Yeah, no, it's a great, great point. And uh, I was actually just on the phone with a, a school district that, that were or after hours use of buildings calendaring system this afternoon. And I was like, hey, good for you. You've got these five days blocked off for refinishing your gymnasium floors that you're not going to rent your space to those schools. Those are the five days. If that doesn't get done in those five days, the window's closed and, right. and they're booking they're booking camps and everything else outside of that. Um, the 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 two things that I the two other things I want to touch on, I don't mean to cut you off, was uh, first of all, you guys, I'm just looking at your contracts because when you said 1,085 contracts, I'm like, what the heck could these guys have? And you got everything covered all the way down to temporary flood barriers. I've never yeah. even seen. I've never even thought that 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 was a need. Um, <clears throat> but what I was going to say on this whole thing is, there's no cost to a school district for being a member of your cooperative, right? They just need to register and get a number. Yeah, and what makes going. and what makes this because what you said about nobody wants to bid on the rural school districts, and this is. Um, my own personal thing, I want to ultimately move my my family and I want to move to northern New Hampshire at some point where the school district has 83 kids. And so I've been working with with New Hampshire uh, selling software for 27 years. And, you know, the beauty of the cooperative purchasing or partnership program is I'm now going to serve, be able to serve that 83 student school district the same way as I would serve an 83,000 school district because they're part of that contract. I'm obligated. My company's obligated. I'm committed. But any company that I work with, if they're on that contract, their obligation is they can't say no. So right. if you've got, if you got an 83 student school district in Northern New Hampshire and you want to be on, and they're on the tips contract and they call and tell you that you can't say, Hey, sorry, uh, we're not doing business with you. We're, we're going to do business with them. Yeah. And, and that school district can call us and go, hey, here's the numbers that, that this company sent us. Are they compliant within their contract? And we yeah. can tell them over the phone or through an email, yes, they're compliant or no, they're not. You know, mm -hmm. that way, they that district in New Hampshire has the same buying power as that district in L.A. L.A. Yeah. Unified, New Hampshire, down to Miami-Dade, Florida, uh, they all have the same buy buying power if they're a member of TIPS. So that's a good yeah. thing. No, that's, that's, that is great. And that's, it, and that's, you know, the model, every student, every day, every classroom, every day, I mean, you're doing it. That's what this program is doing. And what I'm seeing in, in certain areas in the country, Missouri, one of them, um, I'm seeing these organizations um, and states coming on board and saying, Hey, schools, listen, you need to, you need to be educated on these programs. You can save a, a lot of time, money, and effort uh, while providing best possible school environment and, um, for for our kids our stakeholders our community um and th they're all adapting and they're, they're they're coming into this as a, as a collective right they are a collective already but they're they're now using that 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 network to say hey I, we did this roof by uh, you know company xyz um you know what do you think and then well we just bought it off a tips contract it was great now people are purchasing more and more off of that which is really kind of a interesting to see because it's pockets right there's areas that people are all about it and then there's areas that people are are uh slowing down so um so yeah no this is this is cool stuff 
Um, and, and like you say, I mean, just out of fairness, it, um, um, you know, there, there are multiple co-ops. It is, it's, um, for lack of a better word, cause you said it, you know, it, it is a, it's a fairly competitive environment oh, yes. and, and you guys are striving to be, you know, the best. I love hearing, you know, Hey, if we don't respond to something in four hours, we're doing something wrong. Um, I know the handful of times that I've reached out to you, you've either answered the phone, uh, or you've, or you've responded back to me with, with, uh, l- little to no time that's passed. I, I I know that it hasn't been more than four hours. So I know that you're doing your job and, um, and your, your feet on the street, man, you're all, I mean, you live, you're in Texas. Um, and I, I mean, when I talked to you in New Mexico, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had just flown in from San Antonio to Albuquerque. And I think I was talking, I remember, I think you said you were driving to Colorado. Like you, you drive, I could be in Canada in less time than it takes you to drive across the state. And I mean, you're, you're cooking and driving all over the place. Hey, we, uh, we saw each other in Tennessee before we saw each other in New Mexico. That's, that's right. I, we did. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I, think, I think you went to uh, San Antonio and we had people down there when you yep. were, you were there. And then I ran into New Mexico and I was headed to Colorado. So yep. yeah, we cover a lot of ground. We have people all over the country. And I personally work Missouri and love it. Love that state to death, man. There's some great people in the state of Missouri um, and enjoy going up there. We try to make as many events and support as much as we possibly can. I mean, MSPMA is, is one of the organizations that we really enjoy supporting up there. That partnership has really grown. Uh, they're doing great things, training people, training those school districts, their staff, and how that works to have great buildings and, and great, you know, it's all about outcomes for kids, right? Educational yep. outcomes for kids. And, you know, if you can say, if you can have, you can have a great school environment, kids can learn and you can save money doing it um, and be efficient doing it. That's, that's what you're looking for. Uh, you brought something up a while ago and, and I'm going to touch on this briefly for a second. Everybody that sees this is probably thinking how these guys do what they do, how they make their money. Right. Mm-hmm. And you said, you know, we're as a cooperative, we strive to be one of the best. Um, not all cooperatives are equal. Not all chain uh, charge the same administrative fee. Right. Mm-hmm. So devil's always been in the details and it, you know, there's administrative fee to use our contract. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you use any other cooperative, there's always going to be a fee. That fee for us is 2%. Okay. Yeah. If it's anything like janitorial furniture, uh, construction, things of those nature, renovation, whatever, it's 2%. If it's technology, it's 1%, okay? So if you're buying software or any kind of technology from off any of our contracts, it's 1%. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's a, that's a tough margin in the technology world. So we try to shave that down to make it right for the, not only our vendor, but our member as well. So uh, always look, if you enter into a deal and, and there's another cooperative in the picture, Look and see what that uh, that administrative fee is. If you're paying up there four percent or more, yeah, uh, I'd say you shop around for sure. I would not get in above anything above three percent for sure. And we're like I said, we're at two on, yeah. on most things we do, and like one one percent on technology. I, I, you, you want to know something funny? Um, I didn't even realize that that was. Uh, I thought that was kind of a set standard everybody does the same, the same points on that. So no, they're not. Um, and some of those, I mean, that's why you got to watch and see, because it, say you did, you did a several million dollar uh, roofing project in your district. And that fee could run you a lot of money. I mean, here's the thing, what we try to do, if we can save you enough money for a, a teacher salary or teacher's yep. age salary, something along those lines, that's what we try to do. And sometimes if you're having a hard time making ends meet as a school district, you know, we'll work with you. I'm just going to tell you, we'll work with you as a school district to, to meet your goals. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good, that's a good goal to have, especially right now. I mean, we're, we're, uh, I just spoke in, in Atlantic city, New Jersey last week, and I was talking about, you know, the ESSER money's coming to an end. It's it, the, the budgeting, especially like when we talk about Missouri as a state, you know, it's local funding that's, that's taking care of the local schools. Um, so it's, it's, it's a different, it's, it's a definitely a different model. So any opportunity to, to get the same or better solutions and services at, at a lesser price, um, it is, it's allowing that funding model to, to 
free up a salary for a teacher. I mean, it doesn't say, hey, I saved $30,000 for a roof that I'm now I'm going to save a teacher's role. But it, it allows that as long as people are being responsible and looking at things, they can they can do that. They can they can keep keep staff. They can find new programs. I mean, the, the programs that are needed in schools are a lot different than they were just 20 or 30 years ago. They're a lot different than they were 10 years ago. I mean, we've got schools. We have schools that are now doing three meals a day for, in some cases, for families, not just kids. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the schools are truly the fabric of the community, uh, yeah. and they've never been as much as they are today. And uh, you hey, know, and, I, to, and I'll tell you something else, Josh, that's changed in the school world. And, and you're you're dead on about how things have changed the last ten years. Uh, one of our big our biggest things right now that we get the most probably traffic on is safety and security mm -hmm. school districts. And it is, you know, used to be curriculum and how we, how we teach, what we teach, that kind of thing. Now you go, I go to school conferences all the time. And the number one thing on everybody's mind is safety and security. And so we have a ton of contracts for that as well. And that all that safety security it all ties mm -hmm. into the your facilities and the management of your building, you know, because right. you're trying you're trying to manage a, a facility where you can monitor who comes in and out your building and at what pace and at what time, right? And yep. so all that's tied in together now, uh, um, and it goes back to the facility guy or the facility person that's running that that district or that plant as to how that's going to look. And so that now has turned into probably one of our biggest things. We get a yeah. lot, we get a lot of traffic and a lot of questions and calls on, on uh, this vendor or that vendor that have some kind of safety security contract with us. Yeah. And I, and unfortunately, you know, we're having this talk and we were just a couple hours ago when you said Nashville, we're, we're, we're just a couple hours into where a, uh, an active shooter incident that, that six lives were lost. Um, well, five lives, five lives most likely lost to the shooter. And then the shooter was killed, um, in a private, uh, private school in Nashville. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things that, um, um, the news is going off. That's why it's kind of happening here. Um, one of the things that people have to do is keep safety and security at the forefront, always, not just in instances like what's going on right now yeah. and speaking up, we need to be aggressively proactive and continually continuing to look and hone and 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 you know it's just um i'm glad that 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 you guys are taking a, a strong stance on that and finding the best and best in the business for that um because yeah we need to we need to protect our schools more this is uh not not good times for us i, I was i just listened to um to uh a, a uvalde debrief last week and and um it's it's not, 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 not easy going. And, um, yeah. you know, it, uh, it's littered and there's a lot of ambulance chasers that are going to be out there. So the fact that you've got vetted companies that are, that are prepared and ready and always that are right there, that's, uh, that's, that's important. So I actually yeah. just looked, I just pulled up your safety, uh, security list and you got quite a few there. So that's, that's yeah. good. We've got a tab for that now. You know, it used to be a COVID tab. Now it's safety. Yeah. It's sad to say, but now it's a safety security tab. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Making making this. Uh, I was like I said. I when you said one thousand eighty five contracts, I'm like, where? Well, where are we here? Let me let me see where we're listed. Make sure we're listed right. And then I started looking, and I was like, you know, uh, temporary flood barriers. I'm like, well, I would have never thought of that. But that's that's actually something that you need that that having a contract like this and being in you know West Virginia that went through those terrible floods from the hurricane a couple of years ago or or Houston um and Galveston area with the with the floods from the hurricanes like that's something that you need to have you know you don't have time to go to bid you don't have time to go to the yellow pages or google or anything right. else you got to go right to a source and say all right i need to get these right away because i've got a 48 hour lead time um, you know, or Hurricane Ian in Florida that, you know, moved back and forth and then came across the state. And um, that's pretty cool that you uh, that you guys have this all broken out and very easy to find. Yeah. Um, yeah. The rest very easy to find everything. The restoration world and the school world are, are, I'm just telling you, they go hand in hand because whether it's like you just said, it's something catastrophic's happened uh, weather-wise or whatever in your district, 
or it could be just something like your meat freezer go out in your elementary school over Fourth of July holiday when nobody's around because the power went out and you come back to like a hazmat situation, which yeah. I've seen before. You know, it could be the restoration world and the school world. Yeah, they go hand in hand, believe me. Well, and leveraging the contracts and people knowing about the contracts. You just gave the, like the greatest example for me um, that could that could em empower <clears throat> a school. If a deep freeze or a walk-in unit goes offline, the average amount of food that gets spoiled is about ten thousand dollars. It's about ten thousand dollars of spoiled food. Yeah. And if that <clears throat> and if that goes um, if that goes unnoticed. Uh, without sensors or building management system that's going to tie in and give an alert because that's a critical failure of a large expenditure item um and you have you you know then you get the re remediation company that comes in off of the tips contract and they look at the equipment well now that that school should be investing in uh, even if it's a, a sensor you know because they could be they could be relatively inexpensive but looking at the system and saying all right well let's 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 pull this and let's see if there's a contract and make it easy and now we won't won't need to worry about this happening again because typically i hate to say it but if if a if a freezer or a walk in uh refrigeration uh goes offline it's it's typically not the first time and a lot of times it's something so stupid like somebody unplugged you know uh, you know there's a large 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 refrigeration units that actually just work off of plugs mm -hmm. and somehow the plug became dislodged <clears throat> or and and sometimes it's intentional uh that i know of a school that had that happen and it was like three times and it was an employee a disgruntled employee that basically didn't want to work um but you know having that ability to just have that that bang 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 let's let's all right let's let's address the problem let's see the problem and then and then let's fix the problem and you can do it all directly from this one catalog of uh of companies that's pretty cool yeah, I, I know that firsthand about that freezer going out. Just tell you that was that was my school district. Fourth of July, lady had a wreck, hit the transformer pole up the way. Nobody thought it would affect the district, but what we did was we dropped the leg on the power, and all of a sudden that freezer just went out. And it's and I needed an app for that, Josh. I am a lie to you. Yeah. I needed an app for somebody to let me know that a freezer went out because <clears throat> called it. I mean, we had we were already staging up for school to start in mid August. And so we already yep. had a ton of food in that freezer and I pull up on July the 5th and my two maintenance <laughs> guys are on their knees out in front of the school. And I yep. think what is going on? I rolled the window down. I knew what yep. was going on. It was noses. Probably, noses are all plugged. Yeah. It was, it was a hazmat situation. I'm telling you, it permeated the whole school. Oh yeah. 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 So, yeah, no, ro ro there's nothing, there's nothing worse than rotted food, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're talking about July 4th and 5th. And sometimes those, those AC units go offline too, and it just warms it up. It's like a microwave in there. And it's, uh, it's yeah, yeah, no, it's, it is definitely not good. No, I, it, and that's, those are, those are things that, that we don't, that nobody pays attention to until it's our, until something like that happens a lot of yeah. times. No, Hey, um, nobody wanted to be those two maintenance directors or maintenance guys we had that were no. to deal with that. But hey, here's what we did. We called a restoration company. We ran it through a TIPS contract and they came down. They were on site that afternoon. And a lot of those restoration companies are locally yep. owned restoration companies and they're like got a radius. And so yep. we had one with, with the TIPS contract within a radius of like 50, 60 miles. Hey, they were on it that afternoon. And by the end of the week, they had it pretty much under control. Yeah. Uh this is this is great, uh, Cheryl. I think we gave people a ton of information here. Um, now you you you'll be amazed to know this. I I was looking at the uh, the kind of the analytics of our of our activity for the Show Me Mo, which the M O is capitalized for Missouri. So you'd be amazed at what do you think the percentage of people that listen to this podcast, a couple thousand downloads so far. Uh, what do you think the percentage of, of listeners are from Missouri? Oh, I'd say what? 70%? Almost 90%. 90%? <clears throat> yeah, I was amazed. I thought it was 100%. And I was like, 90% of the people are Missouri listeners, uh, most likely schools in Missouri yeah. that, that are facility directors, facility professionals, business managers, superintendents, su support staff for schools. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I'm going to go off for an assumption. Uh, yeah. Very, very amazing. We already talked about MSPMA who hosts this podcast and I'm, I'm an independent 
podcast host uh you know no, no a little bit of skin in the game but not i'm not on the board i'm not i'm, I'm living up here in massachusetts so most of the time the guests are wearing kansas city chiefs uh logo memorabilia to kind of give it to me now that tom brady's in florida retired and the new england patriots and do so well but yeah. um so we have a large contingent of missouri support so um for those folks uh specifically um which there are uh, many of them are using the tips contracts but some of them aren't how do people get a hold of you? You're their guy. Is the sound? I think what you said is Missouri's your state. So, yeah. how do people get a hold of you? How do they get more information? Oh, um, great. Well, first thing, Josh, just go to our website at tips-usa.com. And so, if you go okay. to our website, uh, it pops up. Then there's a a deal on there in the blue bar. Okay. Uh, it's called membership. Just click on that, and uh, it'll tell you basically how to become a member. And uh, it tells you all the people that can become members. It's K-12, school districts, charter schools, universities, public schools, cities, counties, all of that, even hospitals, churches, water districts. Anybody that's uh, a pretty much a nonprofit can be a member of our cooperative. If you slide down there, it says all other state entities click here. Just click on the state of Missouri, and uh, that will bring up the interlocal agreement, all right, for your state. And so – for school districts, here's what we do recommend. You take that, you put that on your school board agenda, okay? Usually we tell them, put it on your consent agenda. We want to be a member of TIPS. The board says, yes, it's free to join. Doesn't cost us a thing, doesn't obligate us to anything, and they join. And they send that to us. A lot of times, they'll send it in beforehand sometimes, but I would make sure that you put it on the school board agenda and then you had a record of it that you did join. So that's just good transparency for the school district for sure. But that's, yeah. the, that's the quickest way to join. It usually takes us, Josh, about once we get the paperwork, about 24 hours to reach back out to you, let you know that you're, you're now a member of TIPS, set your passwords, you can start looking at the contracts. Uh, like I said, all 1,085 of them and checking them out. You can start emailing us, calling us, whatever you need to do if you need some answers. Uh, also, if you go over to that part of, about us, you can meet our team. That gives you all the people that run tips. And again, we have a, a whole bunch of nice people that do this all over the country here and internally. We have probably 12 or 13 here in the hall I work on. Um, also, uh, here's another thing. We have a separate, not really separate part of us, but we have a construction unit as well. That if you're doing, you know, anything deemed to public work, um, you know, roofing, turf, uh, HVAC, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, uh, seating, any of that kind of stuff, you can go to uh, tipsconstruction.com and that'll take you straight to our construction wing. And uh, those guys, we have, probably five or six people, you know, construction's a whole lot more involved or renovations a whole lot more involved than buying lab tables or furniture or yeah. something from the cafeteria. So uh, we have those people in place. They can answer your questions and they'd be glad to do so. Yeah. And if you, and if you don't like to go online, I found, and, and I just went through the process. Oh, yeah. It's extremely easy. It's a the number that they can call is 866-839-8477. Bingo. You finished my sentence and my number for me. So yeah, just pick up the phone and call and, and uh, you know, if you test, test his word before you trust his word is what I would, what I always tell people. If he said, if I don't respond to you in four hours, you know, Hey, something's, yeah. something's going on. So give him a try. And uh, I tell you that um, I really appreciate all that you're doing, uh, sp especially in the state of Missouri, but in the States that I've, I've gotten to know you and watch what you do. The one thing that I've always caught was one, and I and I didn't know until recently that you were a former su superintendent. Uh, but the one thing that I the one thing that I've always caught uh, an eye about you over the years is your passion and care and commitment to your clients. Um, you're you're always there. You're out uh, in front of folks. You are you're always willing to talk and do the things that need to be done to make sure that people know that you're by their side. And uh, and I appreciate that. And uh, and I can tell oh, that you, your I can tell that your member schools uh, appreciate that too. Um, so, and, and I, and I got some homework to do about this, uh, this point system. I didn't, I didn't realize that. I thought all things were, all point systems were created oh, no. equal. Oh no. You know, we, like I said, we want to help school people. We're, we are school people. All right. Yep. So, uh, 
uh, this cooperative is ran by school people. So that's what, what our mission is. No, I appreciate it. And, uh, and, and vendors can go on there. Like I see there's a page actually also on there uh, yep. where vendors can look in. Uh, if, if you just go to the homepage, uh, there's a scrolling uh, feed and it's got um, for people to become members as, as schools to become members. There is uh, new contracts and awards that are updated monthly. You can see, you can click on that link. And then there's an upcoming bids page that'll show uh, what looks like uh, any upcoming RFPs that are going to be coming out, posted RFPs that are coming out. So uh, everything, you, every, everything you need to know is uh, right there in front of you. That's, you guys made it pretty darn easy. So right now there's uh, furniture services, data center house, hosting, photography, waste management, recycling, and vaping sensors. Yep. Who would who would ever thought we need vaping sen sensors yep. in uh, in schools? So hey. <laughs> right, good stuff, my friend. Well, appreciate you taking the time with us here today. That'll do it for another episode of the Show Me Mo podcast. Um, we're gonna come up with some more some more guests. I'm actually gonna hopefully see Charlie here in the next month or so. So again, maybe we'll have him back on for an in person uh, interview next time. But um, we're really having a good time with this podcast. Appreciate, like I said, we've got a very large percentage of our uh, viewers and listeners are coming right out of the great state of Missouri. If you like us, love us, uh, we've earned your five-star rating and review. That's uh, how we get more visibility. And, and we want more of the world to hear about what's going on in Missouri because there's just some amazing, uh, there's amazing work being done. Uh, I just learned that uh, 161 school districts in the state of Missouri uh, our four day school week, uh, school districts, um, which I didn't know until last week, I was actually on the Missouri ASBO podcast and we delivering their keynote, uh, next month. And I didn't know that you had to be West of the, this is all useless knowledge for the day, Charlie, that you can be like, I already okay. knew that. I already knew that, but, um, you have to be West of the Mississippi river to be able to, to have a four day school week. Don't ask me why. Um, and, uh, and 161 uh, school districts in the state uh, currently are on a four-day school week, which I had just heard about this a couple months ago with Saloon Stutzer and Independence uh, School District, because they're the largest. Um, all but three of those school districts are under 3,000 students, so those rural districts in the state. Yep. Um, but uh, you guys are doing some amazing stuff in the great state of Missouri. So if we've earned that five-star rating and review, please uh, click five star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Uh, give us a review. It would be very helpful for us to start getting more visibility. And please follow uh, and like our pages on social media, because once we reach to a critical mass of 150 or more uh, on LinkedIn, um, which I think we're at 93, once we get to 150, we can actually do these things live and we can take your questions, not just mine. So, uh, Charlie, thanks again, my friend. We will talk soon and uh that'll be a wrap have an awesome day everybody thank you josh